Good morning, Facebook Live. Welcome to bringing the zoo to you here at Brookfield Zoo on Giving Tuesday. We appreciate any support helping us take care of our animals for our animal welfare or and our programs. If you'd like to donate today, you can do that on our Facebook page or at czs.org slash donate. Today I have animal care specialists Francine and Manelia, and my name's Craig, and we're keepers here at Wild Encounters. And today, Manelia and Francine are feeding our tortoises. So we'll start down here with our big one, Rotunda. So if you guys visited us uh, last year, you might have seen her cruising around in our wallaby yard. This is our fur-thighed tortoise, or sulcata tortoise. Like I said, her name is Rotunda. She's about 30 years old. She weighs almost 90 pounds now, so she's pretty heavy, but she actually still has a little bit more growing to do. So these guys, females, can get probably close to 100 pounds, or maybe a little bit more. She'll get a little bit larger, and then a male sulcata will get quite a bit heftier, um, both in size, length, and in weight. These guys come from Africa. You can find them in the Southern Sahara portion. They like it nice and dry and, and arid. She's really munching on that lettuce. She really likes that stuff. So because it's where they come from, it's nice and dry and arid, they get a lot of the water that they need from the stuff that they eat. And so these guys are herbivores and they'll get uh, their nutrients from like grasses and like succulent plants. But they can go quite a long time without food or water if they need to. These guys are considered the third largest tortoise species. So they are pretty big. And they get their name because if you look at the backs, of, the back of her legs, she does have these, um, these cone-like spurs down under here. So that's why they're called the spur-thighed tortoise or the sulcata tortoise. <laughs> she does really love lettuce. So we do bring her out uh, for programming. She's one of our ambassador animals. It does take two keepers to safely to move her around. But otherwise, she just kind of walks where she wants to walk. She does kind of memorize her routine too. So if we want to take her out, she like tends to walk where we need her to go so that we can pick her up and put her in her transport. Now over here on the table, we have a couple of guys. These two are our leopard tortoises. The one on the right with a little bit more of the blacker markings is Kaya. And the one on the left here is Sophia. Now these guys also come from Africa. They come from about the eastern and southern parts of Africa. And they're only about three years old. And uh, they weigh, one is just over two pounds and one is just under two pounds. But these guys are actually considered the fourth largest tortoise. So they get to be 18 to 24 inches in diameter and they can weigh somewhere up to like 70 or 80 pounds. So they can get pretty big. Well, these guys are one of the more common turtles you're gonna see throughout Africa too. They're pretty prevalent. Now these guys are also pretty much herbivores. You can see they are enjoying their lettuce too. But what makes these guys really cool is that they'll actually chew on bone that's like leftover from a carcass. It helps them get their calcium. But they'll also, they're also known to eat um, hyena scat, like old hyena scat. That's called copophagia, eating feces like that. And that, again, that does help with their nutrients, helps with calcium, helps their, or their shell grow properly and nicely. So another neat thing about these tortoises, which when we talk a little bit later about, you know, turtles and tortoises and all that stuff, these guys are kind of an exception. They have, if you look at their shell along here, they're lacking something that all other tortoises have, and that's called the nuchal scoot or nuchal bone. That nuchal scoot prevents tortoises from being able to lift their heads really high. But now with these guys not having that, they can lift their heads really high, which actually allows them to swim pretty well. So they're, one of, they're like the only tortoise species that can swim. And now they will stay, they can stay underwater for quite a long time too if they want to. Now over here, you might have seen this guy before too. I think we talked about him once before. This is Touche. Touche is a box turtle. So while he's very similar to these guys, the tortoises, they are, he is a turtle. 
um, which doesn't really mean that much. Um, and the reason why these guys are classified as turtles is because they're related to the wood turtle. They're in the same family. But otherwise, they do. Ha he has a lot of similar features uh, to the, the sulcata and the leopards over here in that he, uh, he doesn't typically swim. You find these guys on land, primarily. The other thing different about him is that he likes to eat meat. So while uh, these guys are over here are primarily herbivore, these guys are omnivores. So he does eat lettuce and fruits and veggies, um, but he also likes to eat insects, especially this earthworm here. So a lot of people, common question that we get all the time, differences between turtles, tortoises, um, terrapins, if people have heard of terrapins, and there's not much different. Pretty much they're all turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises or terrapins or whatnot. So, but primarily the difference between them is where they live. So tortoises are terrestrial, they're land dwelling animals, primarily, again, exceptions to the rules, and there are, you'll find a lot of exceptions like these among reptiles, but um, the leopard tortoises here will spend some time in the water and they can swim, um, but they are tortoises. Um, so that's where tortoises are typically found on land. Turtles, on the other hand, um, you can find them more in the water. And while they do come up on land or they'll sit uh, above water to bask, they spend a lot more of their time in the water. And then a terrapin is kind of like in between. They do a, a, almost like a 50-50 of being on land and water. So some of the ways you can tell the difference, aside from the fact that you're staring at tortoises on land, is uh, their anatomy. So if you look at their shells, tortoises tend to have really big, stumpy, blocky shells. Um, very sturdy, good for protection. Um, they're on land, so uh, a lot of bigger animals are there ready to get them, so they need those, uh, those nice, sturdy shells. Um, and if you look at their feet, though, too, tortoises tend to have like longer legs and stubbier feet, good for like walking and climbing. Now a tortoise or a turtle on the other hand, um, their shells are a lot smoother and sleek. It lets them swim, um, glide through the water when they're swimming. And then if you looked at their feet and you can see it on Touche a little bit, his feet are a little more uh, or a little less stumpy than Rotunda or the leopard tortoises. But a turtle's feet are more like flippers. So that helps them swim as well. <laughs> I can watch them eat all day. That's really, really cute. So Touche is about 40 years old, I believe. Um, he is quite a bit, he's an old man now, but these guys can live, we say anywhere from 60 to 100 years. So he still could have a lot more time left, but he is pretty full grown. And you can see he does have like a special chunk on his shell here. Um, again, this uh, nuchal bone is kind of missing on these guys, but this guy's not a tortoise. Um, but he did break off a piece here, so they, our vet staff actually made a little prosthetic section for him to prevent him from hurting his neck, because this part might have been jagged. You can find this guy on exhibit over at the Hamel Play Zoo, or you can see us uh, when we open up. We're going to be doing our chats again, hopefully. You'll see him as well as our leopard tortoises. And then if you come and visit us in the Wallaby Yard when that's open, you'll probably see Rotunda. She loves it out there, and she cruises all over that yard. And now she's not very fast, but if you walked away and then came back, she's probably moved quite a bit, and you wouldn't even, you'd be surprised at how fast and how much she moves around the yard. You ready for some questions? Sure, let's do some questions. How much does Rotunda weigh? Rotunda weighs about 87 pounds now. So she's still got a little bit more growing to do, but she's pretty close to full grown. And then for a female, this is a, a nice average size. The males can get um, well over 100, closer to 200 pounds. How old is she and how long has she been at Brookfield Zoo? Rotunda is just turned 30 years old a few months ago. And she has been here at the zoo for quite a while. I don't know exactly because she wasn't part of our ambassador program right away. We've only actually had her for a few years here, but she, oh, here we go. We acquired her in 2008 and she was part of our reptile department. So you've probably seen her on exhibit, potentially over with the giraffes. They've been over there before. I think they've been on exhibit in, um, Reptiles and birds, they move around a lot, but now we actually have one here 
as part of our ambassador program because she's very easy to take care of and, and really an impressive animal and she gets a lot of people excited when they see her. How much lettuce can she eat every day and what does she eat besides lettuce? She can eat lettuce all day if we let her. Um, she also will eat hay. Uh, in the wild they eat a lot of grass and a lot of plants. She also likes different fruits, um, but we give that as enrichment, but primarily her diet is a lot of leafy lettuce and then um, kind of like a ground pelleted stuff that's made for tortoises. And then of course she has free choice hay to either hide in or eat or chew on or whatever. And then sometimes we'll take her out. We take her outside. She likes to eat the grass outside too. How many types of tortoises are there? There are a lot of types of tortoises. Um, again, this one would be the, is considered the third largest and the other two over there are considered the fourth largest, but you'll see a lot of much smaller tortoises too, um, many like in pet shops as well. Uh, the other interesting thing is that there are a lot of different subspecies of tortoises too, so they're pretty, like if you look at the box turtle over here, this is an eastern box turtle, but there's also three-toed box turtles and there's also... Ornate. Ornate box turtles, thank you. Um, I think there's western box turtles, so there are a lot of species of tortoises that I would have to look up because I don't know right off the top of my head. Well, that's quite a few. <laughs> how, many, how many do we have at Brookfield Zoo? So here in our, at Hamill Play Zoo, in our ambassador program, we do have the Sulcata. We have three different species of box turtle, and we have our leopard tortoises here, and we also have, um, aside from tortoises, we have musk turtle, and we have Blanding's turtles, which are really cool animals. I think that's what we have here, but then out through the park too, we have other sulcata tortoises, we have Galapagos tortoises, we have, I believe, pancake tortoises, we have a lot of tortoises and turtles. So what does Touche eat besides worms? So Touche's primary diet, he gets um, a leafy mix and fruits and veggies every other day. And then for his meats, he, like, he gets the earthworms as kind of a treat. He doesn't get that regularly, that's enrichment. But regularly he'll get uh, mighty mealworms or some waxworms as enrichment or crickets too. But he kind of eats, he eats really well. He likes everything. Do you have to trim their nails? We have had to trim their nails. Um, we don't do it frequently because they do when they do a lot of walking around they're gonna wear that down on their own but we have trimmed their nails every once in a while how many eggs do they typically lay well it depends on the species um, sulcata tortoises can lay anywhere from like 15 to 30 eggs and then I believe for these other ones it's a little bit of a lower number maybe like 10 to 20 10 to 25 um, I don't know exactly right off the top of my head, but uh, that's kind of a safe number for these guys. Do they have tails? They do have tails. Um, his is the easiest to see. So here's his little tail right there. Boop. It's pretty cute. Um, underneath here, <laughs> let's see if we can see some tails. Yep, there's a tail on these guys too little stubby tails, and then Rotunda's, I'm not gonna pick her up to lift her, but she does have a tail too. But you can see with her shell, it's shaped a little bit different. This portion comes all the way down back here, so it will tuck up on either side if she needs to to keep it from, you know, something from getting it. <clears throat> what are their shells made of? Their shells are made of primarily bone plates. So, and the neat thing about the turtles, are, you know, cartoons, kind of depict turtles as something that can come out of their shell, but they, they can't do that. Like they, the shell grows with the, the tortoise and the turtle. So it's made out of a series of bone plates that go all the way around and it grows with the turtle. So each, each of these are called scoots, each of these little sections. This top portion is the carapace and then underneath her is called the plastron. So while she can tuck her head and arms and legs all inside, they don't actually physically leave the shell, they're unable to do that. And then um, a lot of people are one, one or two, like if I pet the turtle, does it feel 
that I'm petting the shell, and the answer is yes. Because, uh, again, these are bone plates, but there's also nerves that, that grow and attach to this. So if she were sleeping and I came up and kind of like, she would probably startle a little bit. So we don't do that. So she can't come out of her shell, but can any of them tuck their heads totally into their shell? That's a great question. So they can pull their, their heads pretty far in, um, but the neat thing about the box turtle, if you want to come back over here, the reason why they're called the box turtle is because on the plaster on here, they have that nice hinge that Francine's pointing to. And what that does is when he gets nervous, he's probably not gonna get nervous, he's very comfortable with us. He can pull his uh, arms and head inside and that this portion right here will close up over the top of it. So he'll shut like a box. And while um, it doesn't like snap shut, so it's not gonna hurt you, um, if they close, like if they were to close on, on, the fi on your finger or something on a predator, they can close really tight. It's really hard to get to open them. It's really hard to pull your finger out if needed. Do box turtles live in Europe or are they just here in the US? Can we find that out later we and post it? We can find that okay. out later and post that. I, I would like to think that there are probably a species of turtle similar to a box turtle, but we do have um, all those species right here in the US. You can find them you know, all the way from the southwest to closer to the upper north area, depending on which subspecies it is. So we've got Rotunda, who is the what, third, third largest, largest tortoise. And we've got the fourth, fourth largest tortoises here with the leopard tortoise. So who's number one and number two? <laughs> Galapagos is number mm -hmm. one and Aldabra is number two. Francine is our uh, turtle expert, actually, turtle and tortoise. She loves them. That's why she's here today. Now I say that these guys are the fourth largest. They're not full grown yet, so they're still pretty young. They do take a while to grow. So if you were questioning that, yeah, when will they be full famous. grown? Uh, well, these guys can kind of double their size every three years or so, but they don't reach maturity until about 15 years old. And at that point, they probably still do a little bit more growing, but they'll be they'll be adults then. How much do they sleep every day? They're, if I remember right, at least for the sulcata tortoise, they're crepuscular, which means that they're active at dawn and dusk. So they'll probably spend a lot more time sleeping. Now, with animals like these guys that come from harsh environments like the desert, they typically would sleep mostly throughout the day. It's very hot. Um, they're going to kind of want to just rest and, and either burrow or just kind of hide and stay out of the sun until it starts to cool off, and then they'll kind of become more active and start foraging. Do you have any babies right now? Baby tortoises? Yeah, tortoises, I mean, turtles. These guys, actually that's a good question. These guys are young, so they're about three years old. They were hatched here. I wouldn't say they're babies anymore, but they're, they're juvenile. And then we also have a three Blandings turtles that um, are not quite on exhibit yet over at Hamill Family Play Zoo. And we would have, they would have hatched last year. So they're um, probably a little bit over a year old now and they're growing nicely. But uh, as far as babies go, um, potentially in the herp department, they do breed, uh, breed a lot of cool animals over there and uh, they have meat stuff hatching all the time and probably a lot of cute little turtles. <laughs> this is where these guys came from too and they were probably like that big. Okay, so Tiche has that little piece broken off of his shell. Uh, what kinds of things can, uh, can cause that? Uh, that's a good question. If he, maybe a piece of something might have fallen, it, it would have happened a long time ago. Um, it would have to be enough, something with enough force to break a bone. Um, uh, but especially if it's just like a small section like this, a chunk could just break off. It would be different if it were like more in inward yeah so their their shells aren't completely impenetrable right right and it is it's like it's, it is made of bone so it would be like if we broke or fractured something too so what are their predators and what i guess what kinds of things can damage them <laughs> uh predators anything that could damage them would be uh anything that can try and flip them over so that they can't get away um, and it depends on where they, like which one we're talking about here. So um, 
Fortunately, for like stuff like the sulcata tortoise, they don't have a lot of predators, um, but one of the big things that uh, affects them is um, trafficking from like the pet trade uh, and stuff like that. And now these guys too, although they're, they're very prevalent and, uh, and they do get to be a big size, they're, um, we're not concerned about them as much. But I'm trying to think what uh, would live, probably like a hyena, hyenas in the, in the desert would potentially go after these guys, especially the smaller ones. And the, the box turtles, as you said, are all over North America. So um, I know that people can be a danger to them, yes. like cars and things like that. So if, a, if you see a turtle or a tortoise crossing the road, how can you help that animal? So the best thing you can do is try and safely um, stop traffic. Now don't pick the turtle up. Uh, you can tell, hopefully tell which way it's going and you can kind of block people or cars so that you can let that safely get across. Um, don't pick the turtle up, but you might be able to just kind of push it or coax it along to and make sure you're taking it in the direction it's actually going because if you don't, it's probably gonna try and turn around and come back and you might not be there the next time to, to protect it. So again, don't, don't pick them up, don't move them, but block traffic uh, and just kind of guide it across the street in the, in the right direction. Are turtles endangered? Depends on the, the species. So I had mentioned the Blandings turtles a few times already, a few times already, and those uh, turtles are actually, they're Illinois native turtles and they are endangered. So here at the zoo, um, we partner with DuPage County and um, you might see it with like uh, Cosley Zoo and other area or other zoos. We actually breed them here. Um, we have a breeding facility uh, probably out towards the, the back area of the zoo where we have a pond where we release the turtles when they're big enough. And um, they all have, we have a way to track all of them so that way, if we do need uh, like a male or, or a certain female somewhere, we can find them and, bring, and move them over. Um, wh which is why when you guys come to the Hamill Play Zoo, we do have a lot of signage and stuff about our Blandings Turtle Project. Um, and we do have a few of them on exhibit there. And what we do is we get those guys when they're really young and our keepers will actually monitor their growth, uh, make sure that they're growing nicely we take measurements of their shells and, uh, and their weights. We make sure those are growing nicely. We send them that data along. And, uh, and when they're big enough and ready to, uh, when they reach maturity, we will move those guys to our breeding pond if that's where we want to send them. And we'll actually bring in new baby turtles and start that process all over again. Um, to talk about the guys that are here, the uh, sulcata tortoise is actually considered threatened, I believe now which is uh not not the worst but it is something that you know we are we will be continuing to keep an eye on now so all right well thank you guys for joining us hope you learned a lot about tortoises and turtles thank you for supporting the zoo thank you for joining us on giving tuesday again if you'd like to help us and support us in our animal care and welfare programs you can go to our fundraiser page on Facebook or you can go to ccs.org slash donate. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.